Have you ever wondered if heaven truly exists? This question has sparked curiosity and debate for centuries, weaving its way through the tapestry of human history. Heaven, often conceived as a metaphysical realm, is depicted as a paradise in various cultures and religions worldwide. It is envisioned as a place of eternal happiness, peace and harmony, free from the struggles and sorrows of earthly life. Our focus today, however, will delve into one particular perspective. The biblical view of heaven, the Bible, a cornerstone of faith for millions, provides us with intriguing insights into the concept of heaven. It paints a detailed picture not just of a place but of a state of existence that transcends our mortal understanding. So does the Bible affirm the existence of heaven? It's a question that invites us to journey through passages of scripture to explore ancient texts and seek answers in the sacred words of old. Let's dive into the scriptures. The Bible, in its rich tapestry of stories, symbols, and teachings, gives us a glimpse into the heavenly realm. It's a world beyond our physical senses, a place where God resides, and it's mentioned quite a few times throughout the scriptures. Let's take a journey through the Bible, starting from the very beginning. The book of Genesis, in its first verse, states, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This simple yet profound statement affirms the existence of heaven right from the inception of time and space. It sets the stage for the unfolding of the divine narrative where heaven plays a pivotal role. Fast forward to the book of Psalms, where the psalmist in Psalm 19, 1 exclaims, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Here heaven is portrayed not merely as a place, but as a testament to God's glory and grandeur. It's a divine canvas that reflects the Creator's majesty and power. Then we move to the book of Isaiah. In chapter 66, verse 1, we read, Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. This verse affirms heaven as the divine dwelling place, the throne of God. It's a place of authority and dominion where God reigns supreme. These scriptures represent just a fraction of the many instances where heaven is mentioned in the Bible. Each reference paints a picture of heaven as a real divine realm, far beyond our earthly understanding. It's not a myth or a fairy tale, but a place of divine origin and purpose. It's a place of awe and wonder, where God's presence is manifest in its fullest sense. From these scriptures, we see that heaven is not a fairy tale, but a real divine realm. But did you know that the Bible talks about not just one, but three heavens? Indeed, the Bible is filled with references to the heavens, but it's not all the same heaven. It's like a divine layer cake, each layer possessing distinct characteristics and purposes. Let's delve into these three heavens, shall we? The first heaven, as described in the Bible, is the sky or the Earth's atmosphere. You can find this in Genesis 1.20 where it says, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. So this heaven is our immediate environment, the breathable atmosphere, the clouds, and everything else that's part of our daily weather. Next we go beyond the confines of our atmosphere to the second heaven, outer space or the cosmos. Genesis 1.14.18 gives us a glimpse of this heaven. It reads, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. This heaven is where the planets, stars, galaxies, and all celestial bodies exist. It's the vast expanse of the universe that we are still striving to explore. Finally, we reach the third heaven, the dwelling place of God. This is mentioned in 2 Corinthians 12:2 where the Apostle Paul talks about a man, whether in body or out of body, he does not know who was caught up to the third heaven. This is the ultimate heaven, God's divine residence, a place of perfect peace, love and joy. It's where believers hope to spend eternity. So you see, the Bible doesn't present a one-dimensional view of heaven. It's far more complex and layered. It's an atmospheric heaven that sustains life, a cosmic heaven that stirs our curiosity and wonder, and a divine heaven that promises eternal joy. Thus, the Bible presents a multi-dimensional view of heaven, each with its unique characteristics. What does the Bible say about the nature of heaven? A question pondered by many and for good reason. The Bible paints a vivid picture of heaven, one that is teeming with joy, peace and eternal life. In the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 4, it is written, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. 
In essence, this scripture depicts heaven as a place free from the woes and sorrows of earthly life. Similarly, in John chapter 14, verse 2, Jesus assures us of a place in heaven, saying, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? These words provide comfort and assurance that heaven is a place of rest and eternal life. In essence, heaven is depicted as the ultimate destination for believers, a place of eternal joy and communion with God. So, we've explored the Bible's fascinating depiction of heaven. A place of divine promise, a realm that transcends our earthly understanding and yet is as real as the world we inhabit. We delved into the scriptures, unveiling the biblical affirmation of heaven's existence. It's not a figment of our imagination, but a real, tangible place, promised by God himself. We journeyed through the three heavens, each unique and profound in its own right. The first heaven, our immediate atmosphere. The second, the cosmos beyond. And the third, the dwelling place of God, a realm of divine majesty. And finally, we touched on the nature of heaven, a place of peace, joy and eternal fellowship with God, free from the pains and sorrows of this world. As we ponder on these truths, we realize that heaven is not just a concept, but a divine promise, a glorious destination for those who believe.